did you know that in order to be in the top 1% of earners here in the UK, you only need to earn £180,000 a year? Now, I say only not because 180 k isn't a lot of money. Clearly, it is. But I think that when we have conversations around top earners or top earnings, it is common for people to confuse top earners with the uber wealthy, the uber rich. And so what I want to do in this video is explore what tax the top 1% of earners in this country pay towards the overall uh, tax take that the government generates on a yearly basis. And I also want to delve into what that looks like in terms of take home pay. Now, I do have a wider question which I want to ask, which I hope will form part of the conversation that we're going to have in the comment section, because it's a really, really important one. I shared a reel on Instagram a few days ago asking people how they would feel once I did the numbers to break down the tax deductions at this level for the 1% of earners, and the results were interesting to say the least. More on that a bit later on, but first, take a look at this. If you look at the top 1% and you want to paint with a broad brush, there are two groups of people up there. About two thirds of people in the top 1% are employees, people who have sort of ordinary jobs, and many of those work in the finance sector. So lots of people up in the top who work in banks and get effectively paid wages. The other big group at the top are people who work for their own businesses. And again, roughly half of those are people who work in professional services partnerships. So think accountants and lawyers. And about 10% of people up there are people who work for their own companies. So company owner managers. If you want to think about how much tax these people pay, then taken as a group as a whole, the top 1% of adults get around 15% of fiscal income. So that's income that you can see on a tax form effectively. And they pay around 30% of income tax and national insurance contributions combined. Big picture, that group get a lot of the money, but they also pay a very large share of those two income taxes. So according to the IFS, the top 1% of earners in this country contribute about 30% of the total revenue the government generates across income tax and national insurance contributions. Now, when you look at the tax year 23-24, the government generated 440 billion pounds from income tax and national insurance contributions. And when you account 30% of that, it means that that top 1% of earners contributed 132 billion pounds to the tax generated by the government across those two tax uh, classifications. Now, I think that's a pretty good contribution from a seemingly small group of people. But again, how does this translate to the take-home pay, the tax deductions, if you are in this group of top 1% earners? I'm going to dive into those numbers next. And just for full clarity in terms of how this has actually been calculated, I've used Listen to the Tax Man, which is a website which you can go on to and look at these numbers for yourself. But this automatically assumes that these people are employed, so which means that they are being paid via PAYE, i.e. they are taxed at source. And unlike business owners or business operators, they won't be able to use dividends to be able to reduce their tax take. So for business owners, business operators, this will look very, very different. But this is for employed individuals in the top 1% of earners right now in the UK. So in order to be in the top 1% of earners in this country, the exact amount that you need to earn is £180,984 a year, so just shy of 181 k Now, it is worthwhile noting that at this level of earnings, your personal allowance, which is the first 12570 that you can earn tax-free, you lose that. So in other words, all of the £180,984 that you earn will be taxable. And that right there can be quite a big shock to people when they find out. Um, but it significantly impacts the total deductions when it comes to income tax and national insurance. But let's start with income tax first. So at this level, you're going to pay a little bit of tax as a basic rate 20% taxpayer. You're going to pay 7540 to be exact. In the 40% threshold, you're going to pay £34,976. And in the 45% rate threshold, you're going to pay £25,129.80. So in income tax deductions alone, that comes to £67,648.80. Now let's move on to national insurance contributions. So in national insurance contributions, your total deductions will be £6,949.78, which means that the total tax deductions from your initial salary 
of 180,984 will be 74,000 595 pounds and 58 pence, which means that your net wage will be 106,388.42. Now, interestingly for me, and when I was preparing for this, I found this really eye-opening because when you start getting into the monthly net pay, I thought that if you're in the top 1%, that the, the, net, the net monthly pay would be higher. So this is what it looks like. Let's start with gross first. So gross monthly pay at this level 15,082 pounds net after all of the tax deductions you're taking home 8,865 pounds and 70 pence now you tell me whether that is below or above your expectation for someone who is classed as a top one percent earner now what's interesting for me is that we're talking about the top one percent of earners here and generally speaking when you think about people in this earning threshold generally people will think that you will be comfortable financially at this earnings level and that isn't necessarily true there's a piece of uh, research that was recently published which basically states that there are 50 percent of americans earning between one hundred thousand dollars and two hundred thousand dollars who are now living essentially paycheck to paycheck and you may assume and say well how does that happen if you're in the top one percent of earners and indeed how does that happen but there are little things like lifestyle creep. You buy a bigger house, you drive nicer cars, you send your kids to, to better schools. These are all things that you work towards that come into the equation here. And so when you think about the top 1%, are they comfortable? Are they wealthy? That's the question. Are they wealthy? Are they the elite? Are they the uber rich? Are they the uber wealthy? I would argue to say no. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But what I also wanted to do, and I was curious to do when I was preparing this video was, well, let's have a look at it and compare it to the top 5% of earners here in the UK and explore what the numbers look like for that group. Because I think for many people, if you're being told that you're in the top 10%, top 5% of earners in the UK, you'll think you're financially stable, you're financially comfortable, and that isn't the case. And you may be surprised to know that when we get into the top 5% of earners, that you only need to earn £87,012 a year to be in the top 5%. This is what the tax deduction looks like for a top 5% earner in the UK currently. So starting with income tax. So you're going to pay a little bit of tax at that basic rate 20% level, and you're going to pay 7540 So interesting to know here as well is because you're under the £100,000 threshold, you still have your 12,570 personal allowance that you can earn completely tax free. That's going to massively help in this equation. At the 40% tax threshold, you're paying 14,693 pounds and 20 pence. So in income tax, you're paying 22,233 pounds and 20 pence in income tax. Your national insurance deductions will be 5,070 pounds and 34 pence. So overall, the total tax deductions here 27,303 pounds and 54 pence. So your net from 87,012 pounds per year will be 59,708 and 46 pence. Now, we're gonna do a contrast between the top 1% and 5% take home pay because for me, I don't think the gap is that far. And you tell me whether you feel the same or whether you agree with me. So your net take home pay per month as a top 5%er is four thousand nine hundred and seventy five pounds and seventy pence which is a difference from the one percent at three thousand eight hundred and ninety now maybe it's because i just thought as a top one percent earner you should probably as a net position be taking home five figures i don't know that's just how i felt maybe that's felt that's kind of influenced the way i think about this but i'd love to know what you think is the gap as big as you expect as you would expect it to be from a 5% top earner to a 1% top earner when you talk about take home pay specifically. Are we looking at tax wrong? I think that is the real question that I wanna end this video on. Because I think again, when we talk about earnings and earners at this level, we automatically assume that these people are wealthy, they're well off, but they're not the super uber rich or uber wealthy that are the ones that own all of these assets that aren't paying their weight or paying their due in taxes. And there is a reason for that. 
The reason is because they do not generate their income from earnings. They don't go to work for their income. And that's the fundamental difference. And I fundamentally and honestly believe that as a society, we're being manipulated to blame other things that are not necessarily the root cause of our problems. One of the root causes of our problems is mismanagement. Fundamentally, the misuse of tax revenue being wasted, not going in the right places, lack of efficiency. I think the other thing that is fundamentally wrong is the tax system. You know, earned income as a PAYE, you're taxed at source, you have no choice. But uber wealthy people, uber rich people don't, don't rely on earned income. Their income comes from assets, their income comes from investments, and that is what is taxed differently. And fundamentally, the question then becomes, how can society continue to function as it currently is? Here's one for you. This guy right here is the Duke of Westminster. He recently inherited his dad's entire estate worth 10 billion pounds. That's billion with a B. How much tax did he pay? Zero. So the question is, who's the real enemy here? Is the enemy the top 1% earners? Or is the enemy the uber rich, the uber wealthy, who are able to use tax loopholes, who have a copious amount of professional assistance to help them mitigate tax across various jurisdictions across the globe using very complicated tax strategies? Is the enemy the government that allows them these tax loopholes? We're in an election cycle right now. How do we change this? I firmly believe that being politically active is one of the ways that we influence government. And if you do have MPs, you know, on your door trying to get your vote, this is something that should be raised right now. As a society, and I've long said this on Instagram, I have a real problem with capitalism, even though I know that our system is built on capitalism. And capitalism is really what the stock market and investing is built on, which is the core content that I talk about here on this channel. But still, how much more sustainable is this when you can have someone inherit his dad's estate for 10 billion pounds and pay zero. And in the meantime, a top 1% earner who's worked their socks off to get where they are is taxed to the hilt. How is that sustainable? You tell me.